we all want that. But I feel the beauty of Twitter is not so much in that. It's in connecting as a human, as a person with, uh, you know, potential customers, partners, and becoming kind of an authority as a person in your niche, which will then boost anything that you build with your companies. Welcome to Vesa Talks podcast. I'm Mario Milanovic. Tune in as we delve into the digital world of entrepreneurship and uncover the strategies and tactics of successful online business leaders. Today, I'm super happy to uh, welcome Dagobert Renu. Uh, he's the founder of Logology. Uh, he left his high paying job to build a startup with his wife. Confronted with the myths and wrong assumptions about marketing, he charted his own growth method where he interacts with more than 500 Twitter comments every working day, which allowed him to build a more personal brand and to grow more than 60,000 Twitter followers. Welcome, Dagobert. Hey, Mario. Thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. So Twitter is a super uh, hot topic, you know, today. I think uh, I just actually listened to uh, Joe Rogan's uh, podcast with Matt Taibbi yesterday uh, about the oh, Twitter yeah. files and everything else. So uh, I'm uh, really interested in Twitter. I think a lot of people are as well. So uh, before we talk about uh, your Twitter uh, course and uh, your journey, uh, I want to know a little bit more about uh, Dagobert and uh, what led you to uh, become an entrepreneur. Uh, was it a specific event? Was it something where you just said, uh, enough, I had enough? Or uh, yeah. did you just wanted to make a billion dollars? What was it? <laughs> so that was a bit of everything. Uh, yeah, you know, I always loved to create things and to be my own boss. So I remember building my first website, making money at 15. So 18 years ago now, so some time ago. And I always wanted that. But along the way, you know, I started wanting to have a job, wanting to make money, like something like more stable than just small uh, side projects when you're a kid. So eventually I became a developer because I loved building websites. I had a passion for building websites okay. uh, and I was doing everything back then, you know, the design, the code, because there, there wasn't a separation between all these areas like right now. And, but there was always this kind of thread that I was following of wanting to be able to express myself, follow my own drives, uh, follow my own, uh, you know, beliefs and all that. So I was always gravitating towards freelancing or partnering with founders and, you know, joining the team and being helping them. So it was just like a long road until I was about, uh, I think, 28 that I eventually decided, okay, I've seen everything as a partner or like, you know, somebody who helps others as a consultant. Because I've worked with people like in uh, different countries and different scales. Uh, and I eventually realized, okay, there's nothing more that I can do there. And I think the only thing I still need to do if I want to be keep chasing that desire for freedom, happiness, and, you know, expressing myself, I have to build my own company. Like there's not anything else that I can do because I really didn't want to build my own company because it was so stressful. It seems very scary and overwhelming. So I always looked for a different path, but eventually I tried every single path and I was like, okay, there's nothing else I can try. I have to, you know, uh, and so eventually I quit my job that I had at the time working as a uh, software engineer for a U.S. company. And I was like, you know, remotely from France where I live. And I was like, okay, you know, I I'm going to take the plunge. So I left without really having an idea what to do, but being convinced that working for somebody else isn't for me anymore. I tried everything. So this is over for me. So I had some money saved. So, you know, I quit. Okay. Well, it seems to be a, a common uh, thread that people just uh, uh, can't learn more, perhaps. And then, uh, you know, they yeah. want to set on to their own journey. Um, what made you decide to, uh, if in fact, when you actually started the company, what made you decide to go the Twitter route? What, if in fact it was Twitter. Okay, so when we, so 
you know, once I quit my job, I had an idea for a startup, but nothing really stable. And then with my wife, we had the idea of building the logo company and she also wanted to stop freelancing. So we decided to build this company together. So then we spent a bit more than a year to build it. And then we tried to launch it and realized we had no audience, nobody waiting for it. And we kind of fell into this trap of, oh, I'm going to build a startup. It's going to be a beautiful product and everybody's going to love it and we're going to be successful. But none of us uh, was any good at marketing. So we only thought building a good product would be enough. So we really dedicated ourselves to that. And then we launched and it didn't happen. We realized if we're not putting eyes on this product, nobody's going to care. Like it's not enough. Like we didn't build like the next Facebook where everybody's going insane. It's just not right. that kind of product that just takes off automatically. So what do we do? So then over the next few months uh, and years, actually, we tried lots of things, you know, started dabbling into marketing. So we tried Google ads, we tried sponsoring uh, newsletters, we tried writing blog posts. And eventually, when we were kind of getting desperate of not getting anything that worked, I started tweeting with almost no followers and nobody, you know, knowing who I was. But I started, uh, you know, replying to tweets and trying to promote my startup, trying to get some visibility. And after a couple of weeks of doing that, one of my replies got a few sales and a few visits to our website, which for us was big at the time because we were struggling to make more than one or two sales per week. So okay. having like two sales in a day was crazy. So then it made me uh, interested into Twitter and like, okay, this is a thing that has potential. And to be honest, since we didn't make anything else work, we failed at everything else we tried marketing wise. We don't really have any other options. So let me just go all in on Twitter and see where it takes us. Amazing. Great story. So once you started uh, and uh, once you made your first two sales, how did you scale? Like, what did you have to do to actually, uh, you know, get to a much higher sales volume? So the funny thing is, uh, compared to, for example, writing blogs, I noticed that Twitter was, at least at the beginning, it was scaling linearly. So basically, as I was uh, tweeting more and more, understanding, you know, my own voice, how to approach Twitter more strategically, making it into a routine and committing to it, basically full time for a few months, I started getting more followers. And I noticed like there was a complete linear correlation between the number of followers and the sales of our startup. And in about three months of full time Twitter, we went from three to 500 per month to about 2K uh, just with that. And for us, that was a big change, mm -hmm. you know. And then eventually, you know, then eventually it started slowing down and it's, and it stabilized at around 3K um, from Twitter directly. But then I also noticed the beautiful thing about it is you get so much more opportunities, like beyond just uh, selling your product because people know you and they check out your profile. You also meet tons of people. You get, well, like here, you get invited to podcast. You get people yeah. writing articles about your company. And basically all of this PR stuff that we were completely, that, that we don't actually know how to do, to be honest, but mm -hmm. by focusing on Twitter, all this PR stuff kind of happens. And even SEO, like we didn't have many people linking to our website, but now we have hundreds of websites talking about Logology because they discovered it on Twitter. They discovered me. They think the story is interesting. They like what I have to say. And so whenever they think of like writing an article about a topic, they think about our product and they talk about it. So that was this thing that was pretty amazing to see how Twitter is as much uh, content marketing as it is networking. It's about, you know, connecting with other people, like directly, like yeah. making friends. And when you, I mean, you don't have to do it, but that's how I do it. And when you do it this way, especially in the world of startups or like building your own companies where networking is actually a very important part, even though. It's something we might yeah. forget sometimes and just focus on the product. Well, it opened so many doors and made it so, made everything 10 times easier. You know, whenever I have a problem, when I'm like looking for partnerships, makes it, makes it way easier. Amazing. That's really interesting. I actually never thought about it in 
that way directly. I mean, I, I, I guess it is networking, but uh, it's not just about, like you said, sales. It's also about uh, meeting really interesting people and then doing different projects together. So um, how does a guy that has, let's say, I don't know, 50, 100 followers get to 1,000 followers? Is there some type of, um, you know, magic sauce that you can reveal without uh, getting into too much details? But like, what is the... I don't know, top two things that one can do uh, to uh, increase yeah. their uh, followers. So the first thing to keep in mind is it, there's nothing harder than going from zero to a thousand. It's the hardest part. Once you get to a thousand, it accelerates mostly because psychologically, when people see you have a thousand followers, they trust you way more. And they, when they see you have engagement on your tweets, it creates a positive momentum of people seeing you more as an authority. And so before you have a thousand followers, that's why it's, it's pretty hard. And less than a hundred is even worse. Like it's the hardest part. But so the, a couple of things people can do, which is actually change the way you look at Twitter. And I think the main mistake people make is they go on Twitter and they think, oh, I'm going to tweet consistently. I'm going to tweet every day. And by tweeting every day, somehow magically something will happen. And it rarely happens because what, what's happening is you're tweeting every day, but you don't have an audience. So you don't have anybody supporting your content and nobody that can say, oh, I like this, which then is going to propagate it to other people who then are going to like it. So you might be writing the best tweets in the world. If you only have like 10 people seeing your content and two people liking it, the chances of one of your content going viral is like minuscule. So at the beginning, until you have, I mean, and the more you grow, the less you can, you don't, you have to do this. But at the very beginning, the switch you have to make is instead of spending your time tweeting, you need to spend your time connecting. So that means going to people who are tweeting and replying, adding value, connecting with them and with their audience uh, in a secondary way. Because when you, the beauty of Twitter is like when you reply to somebody, everybody else can see it. And also the beauty of Twitter compared to other social media is that a reply to a tweet is the same thing as a tweet. Like on YouTube, if you comment on something, it's just a comment. It's not that interesting compared to a video. Right. Or on Instagram, you have a picture and you have a comment. But on Twitter, a reply to a tweet is a tweet. Like it's the same value. It has the same potential. And that's why if you focus on replies, you're like getting way more visibility for your content because your replies have as much potential to go viral as standalone tweets. But because you're replying to people who already have an audience, so you don't have to reply to people with like millions of followers, just people with like, a few hundred, a few thousand people at your level, it's already enough to get some visibility on your content. So you get more ability to get more followers that then will see your own tweets. But also you connect with these people you're replying to. You're connecting with. And so the goal is to connect with 10, 20, like spend the time that you can, like 30 minutes a day if you want to take it seriously, like spend 30 minutes a day at the beginning, just looking for people who inspire you in your niche and connecting with them, replying to their stuff, and that will be, and that's enough usually to go to 500 or 1000. You don't need much more than this. If you just do this every day, then you will grow way faster than if you just tweet in your own little corner and nobody sees it. And then as you grow more followers and more visibility on your tweets, you can spend more time tweeting and you will get more visibility and you will get a shot at, you know, your tweets going viral. Amazing. Yeah, that's, that's really, really great information i i would have never thought that because i know at some point i don't know when i started tweeting and i'm like well who's even you know reading this it's like the ether it goes yeah, into nowhere exactly and yeah and so this strategy is like super uh super cool um so what about you know uh for example i'm sure you're aware of chat gpt and uh yeah. you know people are now you know basically asking ai to do their tweets you know so what do you think about that so even before ChatGPT, there are a lot of tools that do something that I think is pretty unethical, but whatever, where they're going to take successful tweets from uh, big accounts and then they're going to show them to you and just tell them, well, you can just change a couple words and, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a successful tweet. So I think there are uh, two problems with that, why I don't recommend it. Uh, the first thing is, it's not because it works for somebody that it's going to work for you. 
first off, because if you don't have any audience and it's not going to be enough, you know, you can be writing the best tweets in the world. It's not going to be enough, as I said earlier. But most importantly, it's like, uh, I've seen many people like, well, because I started a year and a half ago with almost zero, with like 100 followers or so. And there were some other people who started at the same time as me who now have like way more than me because now I have like 60K and some people have 200, 300. But the way they grew so fast is that some of them, they just did content that was viral. So they did stuff like this, you know, do threads mm -hmm. that are like just a bunch of lists of content that is just, okay, we're bringing value, we're bringing value or like repeating stuff that was already said, but that was successful, like using AI stuff. Mm -hmm. And that helps you go viral. But I see some of these people now, uh, they stop doing it. And now when they tweet something they really care about, like to promote their product or talk about something they're really interested in, they have almost no engagement because people mm. don't follow them for who they are. They didn't connect with them. They just right. follow them like as you know, a source of information, but it's like not human, uh, not right. a human connection. So right. I noticed it's at least for me, I noticed the reason I'm able to get sales of my startup and all these opportunities is because it's real. Like what I'm tweeting about is something. And sometimes my tweets suck. Like even now I make tweets that completely fail from time to time because I keep trying to say stuff that matters to me. I keep trying to have my own thoughts and I spend some time, you know, thinking about that. And right. some of my thoughts, you know, are stupid and are like, you know, because like everyone, uh, you have to refine your thinking. But the beauty is I get way more people who give a shit, who care about what I'm saying uh, because it's a real thing that I'm saying. It's me. And so I might not grow. I mean, I know from the outside, it seems like I'm growing fast and I am growing fast. But compared to some accounts, I'm growing pretty slow. Like, I mean, I'm not on the highest growth I could be by far because I'm more focused on quality. And so that's why I think AI, uh, you know, tweets, it might be good tweets, but if it's not from your own thoughts, like you, you will, I mean, I understand the appeal of getting a lot of followers. I really do because we all want that. I want that, you know, we all want have followers and this uh, social uh, kind of, you know, status. But uh, I can tell you that it doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters to have more, but like, between two times more and 10 times more, it doesn't change much. What matters is how many people care. So yeah, I think it's better to spend time writing content that is uniquely yeah. yours. Now, ChatGPT can help you because ChatGPT is actually able to take your voice and you know write it with keeping your thoughts. So that can be useful. But the, the goal is make sure you have interesting and thoughts that are, you know, that are yours. Don't copy others because you're not going to grow. You might grow, but you're not going to get what you think you're getting out of it. Right. And that's, again, it speaks to authenticity, right? And that is really important. I think that as these social media platforms get smarter, uh, uh, they're going to be able to identify authenticity way m easier than previously, like even every, whatever, every year or so. I think that uh, your content yeah, yeah. is your content. And if uh, you're faking it, uh, it's going to be, you know, a short game rather than a long game, right? So, I, yeah, I can relate to that. I think that's really, really, really good points. Um, in terms of Twitter, what are your thoughts in terms of it being, you know, this, uh, well, ever since Elon Musk, uh, Elon Musk took it over, have you seen yeah. any, any changes in the algorithms? Has it affected you uh, personally? And uh, what are your thoughts on, on the, the, the changes that are happening there? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm monitoring this very, very closely. And at the beginning, I was stressed, stressed out because I actually launched my Twitter course the day where Elon Musk took over Twitter. So it was very stressful of like, because it seemed like <laughs> everything was crumbling. Everybody was panicking. So I was very stressed out. But eventually what I noticed is, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not a fan of Elon Musk to, enough to know that how he runs his other companies, but at least with Twitter, he seems to announce huge changes and then it's a tiny thing that changes. You know, it's not a big thing. Like, so if I stop thinking about Elon Musk, all the drama and all that, and I just look at my Twitter experience in the past, well, four months that since he took over or five months, uh, it didn't change. Like there's some tweaks, like very recently they introduced, uh, 
for people in the US, but it's soon going to be able to everyone, the ability to do longer tweets. Okay, it's cool. I still think shorter tweets are going to win because people just love short content. So if you make a long, boring tweet, people are not going to engage, so it's not going to change anything. Twitter Blue, which is the paid subscription, uh, right now it doesn't implement anything uh, life-changing. You might have the little check mark, but beyond that, you don't really see less ads, at least from people uh, I know who subscribe to it. You don't get priority in any way. So I think, though long-term, he's doing changes that are very beneficial. He's changing like fundamental things without, I mean, he seems like he's rocking the boat, but he's not actually rocking the boat that much. And I think it's a, it's a pretty positive long-term thing of, okay, fixing deep-rooted problems. Like, for example, I used to have uh, every day uh, three bots tagging me for NFT scams, like for months. And two months ago, uh, they said they were fixing bots. Uh, the next day, it was gone. It really worked. Mm -hmm. like, and so... That's the kind of improvements that are nice. Uh, now, of course, the way he communicates it can be stressful and very chaotic, and I'm not a fan of that. But just judging the product of Twitter, it does seem better and it's going on the right path. And having been on Twitter for one and a half years before he took over, it seems like the, the features that they're working on are more useful and the pace of improvements is a bit faster. It's not like a drastic change, but I'd say for now, uh, it's improving uh, compared to the previous leadership. And I think, and I'm pretty uh, optimistic about this year of like making Twitter uh, relevant again in the, you know, in the realm of social media. So yeah, I'm pretty optimistic about uh, what's happening. But I make sure that I don't follow Elon Musk because if I just look at what he does every day, it's going to stress me out. But if you right. look at the, like, take a step back, I can see, you know, okay you know, nothing significant uh, has changed, only small things taking us to the right direction. So I'm pretty optimistic. Right. Well, I'm, I, I'm a big proponent of free speech and, you know, it uh, being, you know, serving as a town hall, so to speak, right? And I think yeah. that, you know, as these uh, Twitter files uh, have been released, it's shocking to see the type of uh, interference that uh, is oh, being Oh, yeah, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I saw that. To these yeah. social networks, I and I'm you know I, I was never really a Twitter fan, but uh, ever since um, it was it was taken over by Elon, uh, I think that it I, I've become a fan, um, even though I'm I, I don't use it as much. But uh, you know I, I think after this podcast, I'm probably gonna <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at your uh, your I course, hope. and uh, it, it seems like I can learn a lot as well. But uh, yeah, I'm a big proponent of free speech. I think it's one of the most fundamental. Uh, rights, if not yeah. the most important right uh, for humanity. And uh, I am, uh, you know, stoked about uh, where Twitter is heading. I, I hope the other social networks follow. Who knows? So I think Twitter is a really great forum and I think it's going to go and it's going into the right direction. Um, in terms of, you know, a business, I mean, us at Veza Digital, we, you know, we're an agency and we do everything pretty much, right? you know, from SEO okay. to uh, PPC to, you know, all kinds of social media marketing. Um, yeah. What do you think for a company, uh, Twitter, uh, how can it benefit a company the most? So rather than selling a course, which is great, um, you know, what do you think, what, what is the, the secret uh, in Twitter? If there was one thing that you could think about for a company, uh, uh, whatever company it is, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, what's that one thing that they can do to engage and uh, increase their visibility or uh, increase uh, awareness of the company, etc.? So I think where Twitter really shines, and as someone building a company, it's something I probably wouldn't have liked to hear at the beginning, but now it's something that I embrace, is that Twitter is about people, and I always love to give this example. If you had the choice to follow Steve Jobs or Apple, you know, who would you follow? And usually people say Steve Jobs because you want to hear about what he's thinking. You want to see his vision. That's the person that, you know, has the passion. And you see it every time. Like you see like people are going to get way more followers than companies. So even like 
I didn't check, but I think for someone like LeBron James is going to get way more followers than the Lakers, you know, or some stuff like that. Uh, and Elon Musk has way more followers than SpaceX or Tesla, even before he took over. And that's yeah. always like this. And I think uh, the best way uh, to use Twitter is like, it's a way for, to me, it's a way for the CEO to connect with people in such a way that it's going to, remove the distance that usually you have with marketing because with marketing it's usually like if you if you're into tesla you're going to see like maybe an ad somewhere or like you know a tesla account talking about some stuff it's cool but it's not like it's not uh bridging the gap of trust or of like relationship it's just like you know marketing but if you mm -hmm. see elon musk talk about building his new car that's a completely different game and that's way more emotional and and for example, on Twitter, like I do a lot of jokes, I make some memes, you know, I make some jokes, I make, I make, I, make, I have fun. And this is one of the ways that I connect with people. Like it makes people trust me way and trust my companies uh, way more because of this, because it's not just a company, it's this guy company that makes me laugh, that, you know, that I'm inspired by, that all of that, all of this. So I know it's not uh, something a lot of people, uh, CEOs want to hear because we all want like easy marketing that scales like you click on a button you set on a budget and you make uh, you know five times ROI and you're happy we all want that but I feel the beauty of Twitter is not so much in that it's in connecting as a human as a person with uh, you know potential customers partners and becoming kind of an authority as a person in your niche which will then boost anything that you build with your companies so that that would be my advice even though i know it's not like you know uh, what maybe people expect but i think if you want to use twitter to its maximum potential you have to use it as a person and kind of build that personal brand of your thoughts your vision and you know trying to connect mm -hmm. people that way yeah it makes sense i mean uh, we had uh, a lady on our podcast and she's a linkedin expert and it was the same thing yeah you know, she said uh, people follow people, not companies. They couldn't care less about the company, right? So I think yeah. that's a really, really big thing to to keep in mind, um, especially as a company. If you have, I don't know, a thousand employees and who's tweeting what and how do you keep track of that? And, and you know, yeah. if, if you have a culture in your company that uh, says, hey, we're a fun company and we can express ourselves, well, it's going to show through some of the... Uh, tweets or LinkedIn yeah. uh, posts or whatever it is, right? Yeah, super cool. Uh, I was going to ask you about memes. I know part of your uh, program is uh, how to use memes to accelerate growth and all that, right? Is there, and one of the things, it's a hidden strategy, and I love hidden strategies. Can you share maybe one hidden strategy about how to make a meme go viral? Is it something that you retweet or is it something you come up with? Is it, you know, something like the, you know, the jour uh, daily thing that happens in the news or can you, can you give our audience a little bit of a, of a taste? Okay. So d just to, uh, to be clear, like the beauty of memes is that it connects you emotionally with people. It's like you make people laugh and once somebody laughs, like they trust you, like it's just easy. And it's something I noticed, like it just, I mean, if you only make people laugh, they're going to trust you, but not take you seriously. But if you balance it with like making people laugh, plus tweeting about valuable content, things that show that you know your stuff, then it's the perfect combo of people trusting you, you know, perfectly. So that's just the, the, the beauty of it. And now to make memes. So, uh, you know, I create all of these myself. Uh, so it takes a lot of time for me because I made more than 400 now, I think, uh, over more than a year. I, I try to make one per oh. day. That's, that's a challenge okay. I put myself under at the beginning. And it takes that's about great. 30 minutes on average for one meme. So it's a long time. But it's okay. something I really enjoy doing and I wanted to see the potential. So I committed to it. And now it's kind of like what people know me for. So now it's kind of like personal branding. So I keep doing it. And the process, and basically a, a good meme is a good image. Like it's not even the joke. Because, you know, it's always a joke that you make about your industry, about your niche, try to make fun of a pain people have. But the strongest memes like just the image itself, even if you didn't add any caption, any text, that would be funny. Like if it's funny by itself, you already won uh, half of, and it took me a while to realize because I was picking like mediocre quality images and adding jokes and it was, you know, not getting big results. So like 
spending a long time finding the images. So go to meme websites, uh, find inspiration, stuff like 9gag, stuff like Reddit, where you have lots of memes, and find a lot of inspiration until you find an image that you find very funny, and then you have an idea to adapt to your niche. And then the second thing is, it's about telling truth about uh, a pain that your audience has. So for example, me, my audience is startup founders, people like me. So I'm going to talk about the pain that we go through because emotion comes from making fun of these, you know, of this. So you can, I mean, so that's what I love to do is I love to look at like something I'm going through that's painful. And that's, I know a lot of other startup founders and CEOs relate with. And then I'm going to turn it into a joke. It can be more or less dark humor, but it's about using a funny image to make fun of a tough situation. So that's one way. And another cool way of using memes is to do like uh, simple truths, like the simpler, the better, like a very simple truth, but turn into a light way. Uh, that's one way to kind of like give a lesson about something you want to, you know, spread. For example, me, I'm big on teaching founders, you need to do more marketing and not just build a product like I did for two years with my wife and we failed. You need to do more marketing. So I make a lot of jokes about that on my memes about, you know, very simple truth and joke about, uh, you know, these failures that we can have. That That's one right. way to connect with people. That's awesome. I, I, I've never, ever talked to anybody that makes uh, memes professionally, I suppose, because, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, what you kind do. Of. To do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's really, really cool. Cause I mean, you know, I, I, I make some myself just for my friends, but I've never actually thought about putting cool. it on social media. Right. And so that's okay. really, that's really, really good uh, advice. I like that a lot. Cool. Uh, one of the things I always ask my guests is if you were in my shoes, what question would you ask yourself that I didn't ask you? Oh, wow. Okay. Let me see if I can think of something. So, yeah, I think I would ask myself how we managed to not quit for three years without making any money. Because I, I think the thing that can have some value and a lot of people can struggle with. So I would ask myself okay. that. Great. What is, what's so, the answer? Okay. <laughs> I thought it would be funny if you said, okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> you know, and that would just be that. <laughs> that would be funny. No, okay, anyway. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and I think what I didn't expect, you know, as you asked me in the beginning, we, what was the motivation? And one of the motivations was we're going to make millions of dollars. You know, we had this expectation and this hope. And very tough thing, and I think a lot of us have, and a very tough, tough thing is once you realize it's not happening and it's not happening, but it's also probably likely never going to happen like maybe but like your goals kind of change you start to be more realistic and see oh, okay if i just make a living like i would be so happy like once you realize how hard it is and just making a living and then just a good living uh is like uh so challenging so i think like once you go through that once we went through that we really thought of quitting like after two years you spend so much money you know because we spent our savings just to keep you know, living and cost of living while we were building it, not doing anything else. You spend your money, you spend your time, you spend all your energy, and then you lose that motivation of thinking it's going to be easy, you're going to be rich. And then the key is like, do you have a deeper reason to keep going? You know, do you have like this kind of crazy, uh, crazy thing? Because it seems crazy to keep going for a while. And for me, it was, you know, and for my wife too, like, we've done the rounds of every type of work we could do. So we know if we give up on this startup, we're not going back to happiness. We're going back to, okay, uh, the life we didn't want to have anymore. So it's kind of like, so it's not just like, oh, my st our startup failed. It's like, we, we have nowhere else to go. And I think that's a very powerful thing when you don't have anywhere else to go and you don't want to go back. And I remember like after two years, we had spent about half our savings and I didn't in intend to spend more initially, but I was like, okay, we're going to spend everything. Like I'm not going back. Like I commit, I'm not going back. I'm not fucking going back. There's no way I'm going back. This yep. is the life I chose. This is the life we want. So yeah, you know, at the time we had no clue about Twitter, about marketing. We were uh, pretty hopeless for a while, but then it was like, 
you know, I don't want to go back. And this is life. This is about the adventure of life. Uh, let's keep going forward. We don't see the, the shore. We don't see the, uh, we're like on this boat and we don't see the island. We don't see the shore, but like, we're not going to go back because we don't want to, you know, uh, go back home. We just want to create this new thing and reach this new land. So, okay, let's go for it. So I, the, the, the thing I wanted to say is like, it's about, you know, having this deeper reason. Because if you're just in it for the money, you're probably going to fail because you're not going to make money quickly. I mean, unlikely. And so at this point, you'll realize, oh, if I want to make money, I should just have a job. It's going to be way easier to make money, way safer. I can save some money, invest in real estate, whatever, get rich this way. It's going to be way easier than building a startup. So you need a deeper motivation than just money or quick success. Right. Absolutely. Well, I know. I mean, for me, I've, I've, done, I've done five startups and literally the ones that were successful, I had to burn all my bridges behind me where you can't go back. Yeah. You have to move forward and uh, it's a grind and you have to, you know, do a lot of things that you don't want to do and a lot of sleepless nights and all that kind of thing. But, you know, I'm super happy to see uh, young entrepreneurs like yourself, you know, figure out how to make money online because that's really exciting. That's what everybody wants, you know, uh, being yeah. location independent and being able to scale. And uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoy talking to you. Uh, you have a customer. I, I can't wait to get my hands on your thing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, tell, yeah. tell our audience uh, how they can get a hold of you. Uh, uh, I imagine it's your Twitter handle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really Twitter, like where I spend most of my time connecting with people. I also find, which is, one small tip I like to give too is like when you are on so many platforms, you can lose yourself very quickly. Like you spread yourself too thin, too thin, and you also are going to have a hard time building real relationships with people here and there. So I feel like once you found your platform, whether it's Twitter or LinkedIn or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, sticking with it. So that's why if you want to find me, it's on Twitter. I have a LinkedIn, but I'm never there. So like go to my Twitter, which is Dago Renouf. And, you know, that's very easy to find. And that's the main thing. And then on Twitter, I talk about, well, I have a Twitter course. I have the Logology startup, which I'm actually, we are actually pivoting right now to try to take it to 10K per month, which is the goal of the year. Uh, but yeah, I'm sticking with awesome. Twitter and I think, you know, it's a good rule to follow. So that's where you can find that's it. That's great. I love it. You're the Twitter guy. I like it. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. It was a really pre a pleasure to talk to you. And I wish you yeah, all the you best too. and maybe we can reconnect in a year or two and see how many, you know, hopefully you'll have 2 million uh, Twitter followers and, uh, yeah, I hope you know, so. and, uh, it'll be super exciting. So thank you again and we'll chat soon. Thanks, Mario.